It is such a privilege to be talking to you both. Thank you for joining us. Of course, thank yeah. you for being here. I'll start with you, Jordan, because little James, he had such a powerful season in season three. How has that fed into where he is come season four? I think little James's journey in season four, it definitely picks up where it left off in season three. And you start to see how the physical toll of all of this, the, you know, the, the traveling and, you know, things are getting a little more physically intense in season four as well. So you are starting to see how that would take its toll on someone with a physical disability. Um, and not only how it's taking its toll physically, but how it's affecting his faith. And uh, there's there's definitely a lot more story to tell with, with little James's journey. And I'm especially excited about uh, I have a lot of scenes with uh, Liz who plays Mary Magdalene and with Giovanni as well. So you kind of see our character's little trio, our the, the original three mm -hmm. followers, um, how you see how close these three are and you see their their um the how deep their relationship really yeah. is. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it too. Yeah. Mm. There are these little sort of pockets, these groups that you all find within the sort of tribe that is the disciples. Does that play into how you guys relate off screen as much as it does on screen? I would say so, yeah. It's 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 kinda like I was saying earlier, like the tears that have been shed on screen we have shared those tears off screen as well. Like the laughs that we that you see between the disciples on screen, we have shared way too many laughs <laughs> off screen as well. And it's really been a family because we're going on five years now. Yeah. And we've been through so much together. Mm. And what what was just like a little engine that could with the first four episodes in the beginning, it's really become a family. And it's bittersweet to know where last week it was like the halfway point to not only the season being over, but the series. Wow. Yeah. But there, it's so much reassuring knowing we still have half a ways to go with these yeah. guys because I love them. I love them. Do you start to think, my goodness, we are halfway. We're getting near the end. What's it going to be like when this all wraps up? I've I've been dreading the end of this since like season one. <laughs> I've uh, been so afraid of that. And I've talked to other actor friends of mine that have been on other TV shows and asked like how they dealt with that because it's it's this balance of like, as actors, we're kind of trained to always be thinking ahead and looking for the next project because mm. you never know when, you know, a job's going to end or, or when there's going to be a drought. But also it's important to enjoy the moment and to just make the most of it because it will come to an end eventually. And that's uh, it's scary, but it's also there's no other group I would rather, you know, be on this journey with. Yeah, I mean, and I, you know, I, I think this is definitely a family for life, too. Like even in the off season where we have a WhatsApp group that we always keep yeah. in touch with, whether it's talk trash talking about our football teams, <laughs> sending memes, send, sending memes or just FaceTiming or if we're in the same area getting together. Yeah. I will say I'm glad you're here for season four, because if this was a season seven, you know, oh, interview, yeah. I don't we're think we, be we'd be like tears. tears. Be like, yeah. what did you say? I'm so <laughs> sorry. Yeah, that's so. comforting. Knowing like the friendships that we've built, it really is family. And I, except for Jonathan, he won't talk to any of us. <laughs> but, nah, nah. Um, I think that we'll all be, you know, friends for life long after the, the show ends. Yeah. yeah, there'll be a chosen WhatsApp with way too many notifications. Eventually you'll <laughs> yeah. mute it. Yeah, that'll be how it yes. rolls. Yeah. <laughs> There is something so special about The Chosen, though. The fans know it, who've invested right from the beginning, who've stayed committed up until this point and will absolutely be there until season seven. What do you think makes The Chosen so distinct from a storytelling point of view compared to other shows, other uh, sort of movies about Jesus' life as well? Since season one, like, I never pictured Jesus as someone like you could touch and relate to. But just from season one, you're seeing him cracking jokes with his disciples, dancing at a wedding, not great, I would say, <laughs> yeah. but dancing at a wedding, trying. Don't tell Jonathan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'll get kicked off the show. Um, but, you know, and then tears have been shed so much, too. Last season and season three, Simon and Eden had to deal with the loss of their baby. And that's something that so many women, unfortunately, have had to probably experience in this world. So the Chosen's not afraid to tackle tough issues um, and emotional issues and people from all different walks of life can see mirrors of themselves in these characters. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, yeah, it, the, the humanity of the characters and, um, it's a challenging show. I think the best art, uh, challenges the viewer and makes you look inward and, um, not only helps you to see yourself in the characters, but 
uh, helps you discover things about yourself. And uh, I think that The Chosen does an excellent job of doing the, the talking about little James's disability. The relationship between faith and healing is a super complicated one. And there with Mary Magdalene, um, you know, the, the concept of like addiction and just because she found her faith doesn't mean that she's clean and sober forever because the next season she relapses. Mm. And, and I think that that kind of stuff is is beautiful and it's real and it's it's human. And that's why people of all faiths, all denominations of Christianity, but then outside, like with, you know, in the Jewish community, we have Muslim fans, we have atheist fans. Um, and I think it's because of the humanity. The disciples are very much the fans inroad into the story of Jesus and everything that scripture talks about. You mentioned that Jesus is this relatable, touchable kind of character. What do you think the disciples have learned about him through their time alongside him? I think it's to spread that kindness. I know we're not there yet, but but the biggest commandment that, that Jesus really wanted his disciples to get at the Last Supper was uh, love one another as I have loved you. And I feel like there's in today's world, there is so much divide. Yeah. You know, because so many people want, and there's so many people that come from different parts of life, different upbringings, different uh, politics, different religions. But when it all comes down to it, we are all connected one way or another. Mm. So if we all stop and listen to each other and spread that kindness, spread that love, I think that was his main message. Yeah. And I think if we do a lot more than a lot more of that, you know, there's no telling like, the magic this world could be, you know, in terms of the the connectivity, the the togetherness. Yeah, I think the you know Jesus was a disruptor. He he was not um, just the, like he, he was all about love, but he definitely changed the status quo of like how things were. He he disrupted the the system that was in place, and I think that that's something that's changing in the characters as well. Getting okay with chaos and mm. used to it, and not just used to it, but being. Um, the, the reason for a lot of the chaos. And I think that uh, you're going to see that more and more this season and especially in future seasons. Good chaos makers. I yes. like it. Yes. Guys, thank you so much for your time today. All right. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's certainly the rubber meets, meets the road now. Um, and there's a lot of talk this season about, you know, what is our role in all of this? Mm -hmm. How can we best fulfill this mission? And that's really scary. They say the struggle is real. I say the struggle reveals how you deal with the monster that's inside you. I don't buy into the luck. I put my faith and my trust in my team. Everything that we done been through. I, 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 gasoline in my veins.